Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And today what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about the top 5 reasons why Linux is better than Windows for your basic regular computer user. So what do I mean by that? Uh, I mean people who simply come home, they browse the internet, they check their email, maybe log on to social media accounts that most of us are saying, don't do that anymore. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm not talking about people who have very specific software requirements. I'm talk not talking about hardcore gamers. I'm not talking about people who are confined to have to use Windows or Mac for specific work-related things. What I'm talking about is, is your, your basic individual person, whether they're a computer techie guy or not a computer techie guy. Of course, I've done videos like this in the past. A lot of people have done videos like this in the past. Um, but uh, I wanted to go ahead and, and bring this one up because just some other developments, this world of tech is always moving, and so our top five reasons will always shift. And there are indeed several different top five reasons. So we're going to go ahead and dive into this. Number five is more software control. You have a lot more control over the software on a Linux distro. Now, if you don't know a lot about the ins and outs, you're probably going to be stuck with the software versions, particularly that are built within the distro that you're using. And honestly, there's not a lot of problem with that. Um, I have had problems with a few small software packages that I might need to get a different version of. Even in that case, it's a matter of installing uh, either PPAs, installing a different repo of some form or another, uh, or, or just downloading it and, and running it, which are all good options under Windows. Now, the reason I include this in my list now is, of course, with uh, with Windows now is you have uh, what they're starting to do is roll out this Windows 10s this basically your Windows when you get your Windows is now kind of locked in this S mode when you get it and the S mode is streamlined for security and superior performance notice how they're modifying these these S words um, there's a lot of things we thought S stands for you know stupid is some of them and a few other ones uh, basically what Windows 10 S means is that the only applications that can be installed on your computer are those applications that require, uh, th that come from rather the Windows Store. Now, I still have not found the answer to this question. I believe that, um, and now I'm pretty sure that you have to have a Microsoft account to use the Windows Store at all, and that is something I advise people not to use. But I believe that you will even have to move the computer out of S mode by providing it with a Microsoft account. If somebody knows that to the contrary, please let me know below. As for right now, though, from everything I've read, you have to go into the Windows Store to unlock the computer, which you can unlock for free a Windows Home or a Windows Professional from 10S mode. Originally, it cost $50 to unlock the 10 Pro S. Now, they are saying that that is now free, but I believe you still need to provide them with a Microsoft account. And I think that that is a problematic thing because you're now forced to give them your information, which generally includes a lot of private data to a big company in order to install an application. For example, if you have a video game or if you have an old office software or just some CD laying around so it's a program you'd like to run. In order to run that program, you have to provide Microsoft with that information and unlock the system by going into the Microsoft store. If you don't want to do that, well, you just don't use your computer other than the very simple things of using the Edge browser and using the uh, the Windows application mail that's inside the system. And that's not really good options. Um, now, of course, if you wanted to, for example, um, use a different version of Kden Live, I'm recording this video on Linux Mint Cinnamon, which actually still has an older version of Kden Live that doesn't work as well. And so I need to run the more recent versions. So if I come to the download page for this, it's giving you instructions for how to install the most recent Kden Live on any given distribution. So I can pick the one that's in the repo. Now most of these it's going to be the most recent version, particularly in the new 1804 Ubuntu which is coming out here um, within the next couple of weeks or so. Um, 
that will already be in there. You also have the ability to use a repo. So this is actually the method I use. I like this method of installing software better than the app images at this time for reasons I've discussed in some other places. Um, but basically you just install this PPA and now when you run your uh, run your uh, terminal command or even your software store command to get the program installed, then I can use this latest version. This is one of the things that you can do on Linux very easily is you can move and install very specific versions of software. You have a lot of control over the software on your system. Number four, applications for any task. Uh, on a Windows or a Mac ecosystem, oftentimes if you want to, uh, if you want to do some task, maybe in, you know more advanced video editing, maybe you want to do uh, more, um, you know, just graphic editing, a variety of different things. Now, a lot of your open source applications are now cross-platform, so I could use them anywhere. But in Linux, we have built into the system uh, software sources or the, the software managers, the package managers, which is a much more convenient way of installing applications because it's a lot better security. You have the ability to get in there and pretty much find anything you want. Whether you want to do video editing, I prefer Caden Live, but OpenShot, PTV, um, uh, and numerous other ones. You guys can can uh, look all up all the di various different uh, software packages available. They're all in the repositories already. They're all just waiting to be installed without having to download anything, without having to uh, go on to... Um, you know, nebulous websites or whatever else, they're available for any, pretty much any task. Obviously, as I said earlier, if you're locked into an, an, an exact software package for a very specific reason, you might need to stick with the other operating systems. But for the purpose here of, if we're just talking about home computer use, basic computer use, all you need to be focused on is what is the task you want to accomplish, not what is the exact software. So it's like, I want to write an Office document. Well, does that mean you have to have Microsoft Office? No. There are numerous packages available for Linux that will allow you to do Office documents. LibreOffice is just as powerful as Microsoft Office. Um, and you have WPS, uh, you have, I can't even remember them all. There are so many, uh, only office is one of them. Um, there's just numerous different software packages that you can get for Linux. There are some that are proprietary. Uh, some of them you need to pay for as well, but there's a whole lot of them. Like I said, I'm an author. I use, uh, I use LibreOffice very extensively and a lot of very advanced features there's nothing in it that it uh, that Microsoft Office has that I need to do anything in there. I've written entire books and published and produced entire books. I should say produced. Publish is a different, different thing. But I can write and produce all of my books in LibreOffice. And you can do that same task. I do all my budgeting, all my spreadsheets in LibreOffice. We don't have to have Microsoft Office unless you have a very specific constraint for a very specific reason. Uh, but the software allows you uh, to do that. So the applications are my number four reason. Number three is style and appearance. Now, this is kind of a very subjective thing, but the great power of Linux is that in its subjectiveness, you have the ability to choose what you like to use versus in the Windows and the Mac ecosystem, you are being forced a UI by the system itself. Now, if you're just looking at computers a little bit here and there, it may not make a lot of difference to you. For me, what works in front of computers, and I'm doing computers for all the different jobs, I like to have things that look nice to me. And so, uh, with that being said, uh, Recently, like with Windows 10, uh, actually it kind of started with Windows 8, so maybe about three or four years ago, um, the system started to move and this, this progressive trend started to move. You see it in websites, you see it in, in mobile phones, you see it in operating systems, this flat UI. I hate the modern flat UI. It's subjective, it is. Um, it's just a personal opinion, but I loved iOS 6. 
and before that, from the beginnings up to iOS 6, I loved the skeuomorphism. I loved the appearance. It just looked like a gorgeous system to me. And then Joni Ives comes up with iOS 7 and forces everyone on this god-awful looking flat modern block. It looked like crap. And that was kind of the final final exodus away from Apple stuff for me is just just kind of moving away from that. And then Mac did the same thing. It was gorgeous and it went with this flat UI. And then Windows followed suit. Android followed suit. Everything followed suit. Boring, monotonous, flat. Now, like I said, that's subjective. If you love the flat design, you got it. Here's Windows, of course. Very boring, very flat, very monotonous. You know, this is just what it looks. It's just flat. Uh, I really liked Windows. I didn't care for the old 95, 98 look. Looked really old. Um, I liked it. Windows 7, Windows Vista area. Some degree of transparency. A uh, d- degree of skeuomorphism. We had just... I just thought the system looked a whole lot better than it does. Now, if you like modern, cool. You probably love Windows 10, how it looks. I don't. I don't like this modern flat UI, but I don't have the ability to go into the system and change it so it looks like a different system. Whereas on 7, I can actually go back into the older look. Same with XP. I could go back into the older look. Um... But of course with Linux, you have the options. If you like this type of design, you can do it. If you like modern flat Windows 10, you can do it. If you want to do something else that's altogether different, this is one of my desktops here. Um, I'm frozen. Okay. Uh, but this is one of my desktops here. And this one's actually kind of transitional. It uh, doesn't look quite as good yet. But this whole desktop right now, I'm running this background. This whole bar is completely transparent. I have a series of icons over here and it's all based on transparency. I have glassy icons on this system. Uh, This is another one of my desktops. This is my Debian desktop. This is actually what it looks like except I've taken the outline off of this guy over here. Um, So I love these looks. The skeuomorphism, the 3D effects. I personally enjoy this. If I have to look at a computer system all day, this is the type of thing I like to look at. You have those options of your style and your appearance in Linux. You like the flat modern? You got it. You can download flat modern icon packs. You can download skeuomorphic ones. You can make your own. You can do a whole lot of things very easily uh, within the system. So you have the flexibility of your style and your appearance. And those are kind of the, those are, are, are sort of big things for, for the average person. It's just the ability to get in there and make the system your own. That's one of the things that I got back when I switched over to Linux. Number two, reinstalling the operating system, pushing updates. If you've ever had to reinstall the operating system on Windows, be it Windows 95, 98, XP, Vista, 7, Windows 10, it will take a long time. Now, if you purchase a computer from one of your other uh, big vendors, you probably have a lot of bloatware on there. I used to have to spend some time, install the system, remove all the bloatware, and then update the system, and then install all the software. Literally, it will take you all day. In Windows, Getting that system, plugging it in, or reinstall the operating system, removing the bloatware, pushing the updates, installing your software is an all-day task. So just uh, last week, I went out to help one of my viewers uh, rebuild the, the operating system. The system wouldn't load right. So I go over there, have a look at it. Something corrupted somewhere along the line. Haven't figured out, out exactly what it was that caused the corruption. Um, but we're, we looked everything over like, man, Let's just reinstall the operating system. Okay. Little things. Hour and a half later, the entire operating system was installed. There was no excess bloatware. We already pushed the updates in there. Um, And that was just a, a really easy time. Reinstalling it getting the system ready, pushing all the updates. In Windows, that is an all-day task. You have to put in the different disks or download the software, run all the installer things. If you know what software you want to run in Linux, you can actually get a simple text script, put in all the applications you want, push the button, go get some coffee, come back, the entire system will be updated, all the software will be installed, everything's going to be set to go, 
you reboot the system once and it's immediately done. And you don't have this online component and offline component like Windows has where they were so excited they got the the upgrade process from 85 minutes down to 50 minutes. So it still takes an hour when you reboot your computer to have all of the updates in on the latest Windows. That's something you don't get with Linux. You just got to reboot. In fact, you don't even have to reboot it. You just reboot it if you need the updates right this second in time. You can keep running how it is. Um, but the uh, installing the updates, uh, reinstalling the updates, uh, reinstalling the operating system, very, very simple in Linux. You don't have to fight with all of the other stuff that you would have to do in Windows. And my number one reason for Linux being better than Windows uh, for your average computer user is there's no spying and no data collection. Now, Apple, of course, is decent at this. They are still collecting some information, although um, they don't generally sell it. Microsoft is specifically collecting information to sell and to push ads on your operating system to you and about you. They're collecting as much data as they can. That's why I take a strong stand against this Windows 10 S mode. To take a computer that I just bought at the store, I have to give Microsoft a lot of information. And these days, they like you to verify it with your phone number before I can log into the store and unlock the computer in S mode. That's too much data to give this big corporation just to install an application that I want to use, like Firefox or... CCleaner or any other application I might have that I want to run on my computer. Windows 10, the reason I don't use it is because of the spying and the data collection. The operating system itself is just fine. I can deal with the ugly UI. That doesn't actually bother me so much that I wouldn't use the system. Why I switched to Linux was all of the data collection, all of that privacy. And this has become a big issue lately where people are, are starting to really look at the data collection in light of Cambridge Analytica, in light of all this. And, and the sad thing is this has been going on for decades. We're just waking up to it. But the Linux system is a whole lot better at not scraping and harvesting all of your data. So these were my top five reasons why Linux is better than, than Windows for your basic computer user. So thanks for watching the video and making it to the very end. If you'd like to help to support the channel, you can check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support. Uh, there's some links there for Amazon. If you have shop at Amazon, you can use my affiliate account found on that page or in the description down here below. Doesn't cost you anything more, but Amazon's going to send a small portion of that sale to help support the channel. Uh, there's also a PayPal link there, and um, there's information there on the uh, Patreon page, for example, which is patreon.com forward slash Tom M. And there's also a shop if you want to pick up some Switch to Linux item. I have, for example, travel mugs, water bottles of the same sort, uh, T-shirts, mouse pads, shopping bags. You can check out shop.switchtolinux.com. That will redirect you over to Spreadshirt. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.